All right, you little thermometer. I got your batteries right here. Put those in there, fresh batteries in, and it's working again. Hey everybody, do you have little devices around your life that run on batteries and that sometimes those batteries go dead and then you realize, ah, oh, I gotta go find some new batteries and I've gotta maybe even go to the store and get new batteries. And it's just annoying to have to constantly be replacing batteries and little devices that are around your house all the time. Now this is a little thermometer I use out here in the garage. And to be fair, I love this thermometer and the batteries actually last three or four months. But when I walk past it and I see it's dead, it's just one of those things, ah, oh, great, now I gotta go and find some batteries for it. But I also have a whole bunch of holiday decorations that run on batteries, and those tend to go dead within a day or two. So in this video, I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to convert something that runs on batteries like this to instead run off of a little wall adapter like this. Let's get started. This is the holiday decoration we're gonna be working on in this video today. It's a little tree and it has lights kind of sprinkled throughout its branches. And when it has the correct amount of power flowing through it, it really is a beautiful little decoration and it's one of my very favorite holiday decorations that we put out every year. The problem is the batteries only last about a day or so. It takes three AA batteries and they go into the base right in through here, kind of in a U shape like that. Then it's got a little on off switch down there so you can flip it on and it looks fantastic until the batteries are dead and then it looks like a tree. So I'll be modifying this device to not require batteries at all and instead plug straight into the wall. Now before I get into the details, a quick disclaimer. I'm gonna be messing with electricity and electricity can be dangerous. If you don't have a good idea what you're doing here, you probably shouldn't try this project. This video is for entertainment purposes only, and if you try this and something goes horribly wrong, I'm not responsible. Now, having said that, let me show you the right way to do this. The first thing you need to know is how many volts your circuit is going to require, and handily, on this big warning label, it says right at the bottom, this circuit requires 4.5 volts. Now, if they didn't label it, I would have already known it requires 4.5 volts by simply adding up the number of batteries and multiplying by 1.5 volts per battery, since this is wired in series. So if your device requires four batteries, you're gonna need a six volt supply. If it only requires two batteries, then you'll only need a three volt supply. Speaking of a power supply, this is the one I'm gonna be using. It's an old wall adapter to charge up a cell phone and it will supply 4.8 volts at 0.9 amps. And that's gonna be plenty of current and is close enough to my 4.5 volts to not really make any difference. This will work just fine. Now, if you don't have one of these old power supplies kicking around that matches the requirements for the device that you're gonna be converting, you can usually find these really inexpensively at your local thrift store. In fact, that's where I found this power supply. I went to the store knowing about how many volts I was gonna need and I just hunted through them until I found one that was right. Now, when looking at the end that's on this power supply, it looks like it's got a pretty wide connection with a whole bunch of different pins in there. But if you look really carefully there's really only two connections in there and that's going to be the negative and the positive connection for the 4.8 volts. So we'll simply cut off that connector. We're not going to need it at all where we're going and then strip off the outer insulation. And then we can confirm that inside this there's only two connectors, the negative and the positive. I'll strip off a little insulation from the ends and then I'll use my multi-tester to confirm that this really is supplying 4.8 volts. All right, having confirmed that the power supply does in fact supply exactly what I need, I'll take off this bottom cover. With that cover removed, I can see the circuit is incredibly simple. The negative side is on the right, the positive side is over here on the left, and then I can just drill a little hole in the back part of the case here to feed my power wire through. So now that I understand where I need to tie into this wiring, I can cut the right side, which is the negative, and the left side, which is the positive. Then I'll strip back a little bit of the insulation on that wiring, and we'll do a quick test where I just touch the wires together to the live power supply, and you can see the lights are turning on there in the background, and it's working fine. Before I make any electrical connections, I'll drill a hole in the back of the case to feed my wire through from the power supply. And once that power supply wire is fed through, I'll tie a small knot in the end to provide a little bit of strain relief inside the case. Now we're ready to finish off our electrical connections. I'll put a little piece of heat shrink on both the negative and the positive wires. Then I'll solder the negative wire from the circuit to the negative side of my power supply, and I'll solder the positive side of the circuit to the positive wire of my power supply. With the soldering complete, I'll slide my heat shrink down over the connections and then shrink it down with a heat gun. I like this heat shrink that has a little bit of solder inside it that helps to kind of reinforce the electrical connection I've already made. I'll leave a link to these down in the description. With the soldering all complete, I can put the case back together tuck the wires up inside, and then replace that access panel with the big scary warning. And as you can see, the finished result looks pretty clean. 
All right, with that real simple wiring job finished up, let's go ahead and plug this in. And as you can see, it lights up as though it just had some fresh batteries put in it. Only now I won't have to change the batteries in this thing all the time. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. the garage and I'll realize this thing is dead. Now the dog's barking, so I'm gonna have to do another take. Isn't that nice? This is our victim for this video today. This is a little holiday or um, decoration ornament. Mm -hmm. Ballpark of the voltage we need. Ah, oh, and you can see the camera. Awesome. Let's do this again. We're just gonna wrap this one up super fast.